Hey guys, Sandy here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Follow a Sketch February. It is February 13th. So this is today's sketch. It is by Inspired Blueprint. So it calls for three photos, maybe some doily stuff going on here, a tag, little bits of things. So I have three photos that I'm going to cut down. I also pulled out some purple and green things. And then I had this left over from my layout from yesterday. So let's see what I can do. All right guys, so I am starting out by using the mini mandala stencil from Scrapping Reflections and I am just using some grape ink, I believe. It's still sitting out. Yes, grape ink from close to my heart. And I'm using a, uh, just a blender brush to place that on. Now, I don't do a tremendous job inking and I'm really not pleased with how this looks. Like I'm just gonna straight up tell you, I don't like it. However, this is my only sheet of this green paper and I really want to use this green paper and mix up green and purple for this layout. I don't know why, I just knew when I was looking for supplies for this sketch, I just wanted to do green and purple. Like I just want like that was just something that was in my head and I needed to make it happen. So I go ahead and pull out some uh, glitter glaze because you know what guys glitter glaze can save the day for just about anything and it does I put the glitter glaze uh, over top of the inked bit um, on the stencil and now it just looks like a halo is around my glitter glaze and I like that look but I was not a fan of just the straight um, ink over top of the paper. It started to turn a little bit brown looking in my opinion instead of the gorgeous purple that it needed to be. So also silicone brushes you guys I have more silicone brushes than any one person would probably need and I have one two three four five <laughs> five <laughs> that are used for glitter glaze and two of them are two sets are of the same size. Now, just like I suggest, if you're gonna use a palette knife for your glitter glaze, you use a palette knife just for glitter glaze. If you're gonna do this with the silicone brushes, you need to get silicone brushes that are just for glitter glaze as well. That is how I ended up with five of them instead of three uh, because I used all of them for glitter glaze. But the glitter sticks, the glitter glitz up inside of there, where the metal part goes around the silicone brush part and it's just a thing. So anyway, now I have glitter glaze silicone brushes and non glitter glaze silicone brushes. So I say all that to just be careful, right? Just be careful. So now I have this kind of die cut paper and I picked this up at Michael's years ago and it's still just, you know, chilling out in my stash waiting to be used. And I'm going to use that and also this uh, fringe bit. This is a doodlebug something. What do they call it? Paper frills, I think, um, that I am going to layer up and place on top of the uh, stenciled, uh, stenciled stencilness up here, <laughs> whatever we're calling it. Now, this green paper is actually not 12 by 12. I cut it down um, because I'm going to work on it and then I'm going to place it down over top a piece of purple cardstock. Um, again, because the green and purple are calling to my soul. So making sure that that happens. Now, these are my three photos. So these photos are from King Cannon. Uh, winery over in Livermore, California. So they have this, uh, like the original house and they have topiaries. Now I absolutely love King Cannon. I love going there. It's a relaxing environment. It's a beautiful environment. Um, the, the, the wines are beautiful. The, um, grounds are beautiful. Like it's, it's just, it's just, a place where you can just go and just be like, oh. but these topiaries guys, they're a little derpy. <laughs> they're a little weird and I love them because they're so weird. Um, so I had to take some photos of them 
and um, I went ahead and put the King Cannon house there as well. So I am using the wood grain that I had cut apart um, and going to place that underneath of the photo. Now I should have paid attention to the size of the wood grain and the amount that the photos were going to stick out because the photo, the top photo ends up going right to the edge of the wood grain. So I have to kind of figure out what I'm doing. Um, and then while I'm moving things around, since I didn't wait for my mixed media to dry, um, you guys, I actually get a little bit of the glitter glaze on the photo in the photo mats. I'm not going to stress out about it though. Um, because I am a little bit of a messy paper crafter. Um, so I'm just going to go with it, right? Like, but if this makes your heart hurt, <laughs> then, then you're going to want to make sure your mixed media is completely dry. So here's where I am extend, extending out those wood grain herringbone patterns here. And just adding a little bit more adhesive so that it actually sticks. Because sticking stuff down... Uh, is kind of a, a big objective when you're scrapbooking, right? Like you want it to stay stuck down. So now I am going to look around for my uh, little paper border thing and I find it because I actually put it away and who knew that I can actually put things away. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and layer this up right here and place this uh, down here on the layout as well. So as you can see, I am not adding a large tag uh, to this layout. I decided to go instead with those wood grain kind of chevron uh, things. I think I called it a herringbone earlier. Um, and now I have these felt flowers that I want to make sure get on my page as well. So I am going to place them in three different areas. And then I'm also going to pull in my flat backed rhinestones and, and we're pulling in the hot glue gun because why not? So I'm going to hot glue the felt flowers down to the page. Um, I'm also going to use uh, this little uh, pre-made embellishment that says enjoy every moment. And then I'm going to put down an actual title. So the enjoy every moment turns out to be kind of a subtitle. Uh, even though it is on the top of the page, it still can be a subtitle if it's on the top of the page. At least I think it can be a subtitle on the top of the page. If that kind of stresses you out, just close your eyes and squint. <laughs> <laughs> and then you won't even know. Um, so I have this word that says moments. Um, so I've got moments down here and moment in the subtitle. So I am just reinforcing the fact that this really was a special moment. So now I'm going to actually go ahead and uh, hot glue my stuff down. And yes, I did. Yes, I did just touch the tip of the hot glue gun with my finger to see if it was hot enough. And don't do that, <laughs> okay? Don't do that. Um, God, I feel like I'm like when, um, when I was a little kid and my mom would say, do as I say and not as I do. <laughs> I feel like I'm that, I feel like I am that person right now. Like I am touching the tip of my hot glue gun. I test out the heat of my heat tool by running it on my hand. Like, don't do that. <laughs> um, I don't know. We always tease that I have asbestos fingers um, because I can handle hot things um, a lot more than uh, the normal person might be able to, um, i.e. my husband. Um, so yeah, there is that thing. So I am testing out sizes for these flat back rhinestones. I'm also going to test out colors. Um, I thought about doing the white instead of the purple, but ultimately we go with the purple, which makes me happy because this is a purple and green layout. Now, apparently with a little bit of black and gold and brown tossed in. Now I am using my quick cuts, um, or I guess this is a silhouette uh, pick-me-up tool. Now, fun fact, 
this tool um, used to be Quick Cuts, and then it is now Silhouette. The bottom part um, switches out um, where one is a flat uh, kind of thing that almost looks like a flathead screwdriver. And then when you flip it over, it is a pointy uh, plastic tip. So I keep mine where it's the pointy screwdriver side out all the time because even though that is the sharp side too, it's less, it's less likely to uh, hurt myself with the pokey side. Now this thing is kind of a wax tip, but not like a wax tip like a crystal katana. Um, this one you screw down and the pressure causes the wax to come out. So it eventually runs out, right? Like the sticky part runs out. Um, I had my original one for years and years and years and years. Um, so it does take forever. Um, anyway, now that I have um, my words down, my centers in the flowers, I'm going to do a couple lines of journaling right here. And then as you can see, I did a sketchy border around the green portion of the layout. And I think that that just finishes it off. So that is going to do it for this layout, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please join the Scrapping Reflections Facebook group if you'd like to play along with any of the sketches from Follow a Sketch February. And please, guys, answer the membership question. Um, it's one simple question, and if you don't answer it, I give you a couple days. If you don't answer it, I decline your request. So answer the question. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys again real soon for another video.